Welcome to the 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Nate Kim, Solutions Architect on Worldwide Public Sector Higher Ed Team. In my role, I frequently work with researchers to help them get started with AWS Journey. Today, I wanna to talk about getting started with Jupyter Notebook, more specifically, SageMaker Studio Notebook in your AWS account. Let's get started. So what is a Jupyter Notebook? Jupyter Notebook is a browser-based interactive computational environment that allows users to create documents, run codes, and share results. It combines three components, which are web application uh, that you can use to access notebook with browser of your choice, kernels engine that allows you to run codes on specified language within your document. Python is primarily used, but it is not limited to it. Other languages such as R or Julia can be used. Notebook documents where all your code, computation, visualization, and object contents are used. Jupyter Notebook provides uh, powerful tools to interactively create a story within your data analysis. This makes it easier to visually follow steps and get results all in the same document. In 2018, Jupyter Lab was released. It's a next generation release that had improvements on user interface, such as allowing users to use multiple notebook documents, have text editor, terminal windows, and others, all from the same browser. And this brings to a point of how does Jupyter Notebook work on AWS? And this is where SageMaker Studio Notebook comes into play. Often researchers are tasked with installing and configuring their own Jupyter Notebook instance or work with IT department to set it up. This can lead to a challenge in managing the instance and also be very time consuming. With SageMaker Studio Notebook, you can create collaborative, flexible, and manage Jupyter Notebook within minutes. Once Studio is set up with a click of a button, you can set up your Jupyter Notebook instance. It comes with a Python uh, SDK, excuse me, I meant to say SageMaker Python SDK, an open source library for training and deploying your machine learning model that includes different frameworks such as PyTorch and MXNet. You can share your notebook to create a collaborative environment and allow multiple users to access. This is great if you're setting up for uh, your lab. I'll now walk through creating a SageMaker Studio notebook through AWS console. Once you're on a console, I will search for SageMaker from the search bar. You'll see a subset of features that SageMaker provides, and I'll go ahead and click on SageMaker Studio. You can see Get Started page. Let's leave Quick Start option and give it a username. I'll be calling mine demo user. You're going to need an execution role to give SageMaker permission to other AWS services such as S3 for loading data set. Let's go ahead and click on create a new role. First option allows this role to access any S3 bucket within the account. If you have specific S3 buckets for storing your data set, you can choose to specify it. I'm going to leave it as any S3 bucket. Enabling Jumpstart will give you an access to example projects and notebooks that'll help you get started from the existing templates. Before clicking Submit, let's make sure that the execution role is selected. Click Submit. And this will take about five minutes to complete. You'll see a note saying SageMaker Studio is ready. I'll go ahead and click on Open Studio. And again, this will take some time to load.
once Studio Notebook is opened, you can see that it has a similar interface with Jupyter Lab. You can go to File, New, and Notebook to create one. Select a kernel to run, and I'm choosing Python 3 Data Science, but you can choose different kernels based on your needs. You can click Select. You can see on the left bottom, kernel is starting. And while this is loading, let's check out some other features. Select the file, new, that will allow you to create different file types such as console access or a simple text file. Create a new text file and save. And you can see that a new text file has been created. I'm going to close it and then reopen it just to verify it. You can also upload an image by clicking the upwards arrow. Confirm that there is new object created. You can drag image file to the window and verify that it's loaded. You can also browse Jumpstart and launch example notebook instance. I will select fraud detection solution and click launch. And while this is loading, let's go back to the notebook instance that we created earlier. You should be able to see compute and memory assigned. And all the commands you run will actually run within the kernel you've assigned as well. Click on the instance configuration to view different instance types you want to select. and we'll cancel it. In the Jupyter Notebook instance created earlier, you can run commands under a code or create markdown or just a text all within the document. Let's add some simple command and run it. And you can see that the value of X is returned right away. Let's add more commands. You can see that the value of X is still stored. This is because it's running in the same kernel. Now, let's change the value of X and not run the cell, but the one after. You can see that the value is still the same because the changes that have not been reflected which you can confirm from the numbers on the left. And let's go ahead and assign the cell to assign a new value to X and then run the cells again. You can see that the value of X was updated and returned immediately. This is how you can work interactively with your data. You can also import data from S3. I have example CSV file uploaded to my bucket that I can run commands to display. I'll be running pandas that would allow me to read the CSV file contents. And remember, I gave a full permission to all the buckets. And you can see the result of my CSV file all in the same document. You can also pull in images into the document. And this is the same image that we uploaded earlier. Let's head back to the Jumpstart instance we launched earlier. Click open. And here you can see the example of notebook instance. Through this series, you learn what Jupyter Notebook instance is and how you can use SageMaker to create a Jupyter Notebook. Now that you learn how to get started, my call to action would be to really try out and explore the art of possible within your research. And more importantly, have fun. And with that, thank you for your time.